All right, so to start off with question eight, um, we're going to look at showing the cycle on a PV diagram. So to start off with the shape of the PV diagram, you might know that we don't have all the variables, particularly the volume, but we do know the shape based on the information that's already in the question. So we know that uh, process 1-2 is an isochoric process, so it's done under constant volume. And then we have it followed by a reversible adiabatic expansion, so isentropic. Um, with an expansion, obviously, we're going to have the volume become larger. And then we follow it up with a polytropic um, compression, which links it down to the cycle there. So that's roughly what the graph should look like. Now moving to part B, we're going to be determining the, determining the polytropic index for process 3.1. So to be able to do that, we first have to look at uh, several of the val intermediate values between each of the state points. So this is the way that I work the question. So to start off with state 1 to 2, state 1 to 2, I'll write down all of the information that we already have. So pressure 1 is 150 kPa. Temperature 1 in Kelvin. and volume one meter cubed. So then we go to oops, pressure two, we're given as 1500 kilopascals. T2, we're not given. And the volume two, because it's an isochoric process, will be the s same, 0 0.1. One. 0 0.1. Cool. All right, so because we don't know what T2 is, we're going to find that out. So this process is pretty straightforward. We're going to equate through I, our ideal gas law, PV equals MRT. We know that the volume is constant, so we can have, oops, pressure. MRT2 on P2. So this is going the long way, it's just showing you every single process. And we should end up with temperature 2 is equal to, sorry, yep, temperature 2 is over, uh, is equal to pressure 2 over pressure 1 times temperature 1. And if you plug that in, you should get a temperature 2 of 3001.5 Kelvin. And then you can plug that back into the top for reference. OK, moving on to state two to three, the adiabatic um, isentropic expansion. We're going to go through a similar process. So st starting out with process two to three and writing the information I know. So I'll just copy the information that I've gotten from my previous Calculations. Just get rid of that. 3001.5 Kelvin. Okay, so we know what pressure 3 is 15 kilopascals. T3 we don't know yet. And we shouldn't know what V3 is yet either. Okay, so starting out with what we can calculate, we can calculate um, the final pressure for the third state point. Now, the equation that you can use for that is T3 on T2 equals P3 on P2, K minus 1 on K. Um, is everyone happy with that, or do you want me to go and derive that 
um, equation because you might not know it off your off the top of your head. Do you want, yeah, I can derive that. Okay, so. We know that we have P1, oh sorry, 2, V2 to the power of K is equal to P1, V1, oh 3, sorry, power K. And we want to determine what the temperature is. We don't know what the volume is, so why don't we substitute from our ideal gas law equation, which I write on the red here for reference into this equation here. Yep. So instead of V2, I'm putting M R T2 on P2 to the power of K. P3, M R T3 on P3 to the power of K. Okay, now we've got M and R, they're constant because it's a closed system, so we can cancel them out on both sides. And I can combine the pressure values into one, so I'll have T2 to the power of K on P2 to the power of K minus one. Did everyone understand the step there? Yep. T3 to the power of K on P3 K minus one. Okay, and we're trying to find T3, so T3 power K is equal to P, oh. T3 to the power K is equal to P3 on P2 K minus 1 times T2 to the power of K, and just to get rid of the K, we therefore end up with this result here times T2. Okay, does it, so did that make sense to everybody? Cool. All right, so if you plug in the value there for T3, you should get a value of around 805 Kelvin. <laughs> so we're gonna do a very similar process with um, finding the volume for state point three. Okay, so the derivation for the equation to relate volume and temperature for this process is essentially the same, just slight differences. So I might just brush over that this time. So volume three, temperature two, temperature three, on one K minus one, C two. Okay, so that was just going through the same process that we went here, but instead of substituting um, in the Volume, I substitute in the pressure and I should get that value out there, okay? You can try it yourself um, if you want at a later stage. Okay, so if you plug in all those values, so we know what our temperature two is, we know what our temperature three is because we just calculated that. We can then find what our volume at the third state point is and you should find it's around about 2.68 meters cubed. All right, so that's it for um, state two to three. So now we're going to our final state, and this is where we can calculate our uh, index as well. So just continuing the process that I've been going on with last time, I'm just gonna copy all the values that I have from, oh, two, no, three. 15 kilopascals, temperature three equals eight. That's pressure. 5.2 Kelvin, V3 equals 2.68 meters cubed. Okay, so we know what our final pressure is. Temperature, um, get back to that, and 0 0.1 meters cubed. I don't have the temperature on my notes at the moment, but we don't need that at the moment. Okay, pressure, th so we know from our polytropic relationship that we got P3V3 to the power of N equals P1V1 to the power of N. Okay, so we've had a few questions like this, um, and I think there was one similar in this workshop as well, for how we find our index, our N value. So we take the log of both sides. So remember that when we're taking the logs of two multiples, 
we end up with something like this. So log P3 plus N log V3 equals log P1 plus N log V1. Okay, so if you rearrange that, I won't go through all the steps. You'll get log P1 on P3 over log V3 over V1. Okay, so if you substitute the values for the pressures at both state points as well as the volumes, you should end up with your final index of 0 0.7. So that's the answer to part A. All right, is there anyone have any questions about this, the process so far? No? Okay, let's move on to part B. Okay, so now we want to be calculating the work uh, and heat transfer for each point. So three, okay. All right, so let's start off with um, state point, so state one to two, or process one to two. So it's a isochoric process, and so what that means is the work is equal to zero. So remember that work is equal to the integral of P dV. There's no change in volume, so the work term becomes zero. So knowing our first law, we can say that the internal energy is equal to the heat transfer. Okay. So the easiest way to go about this is to use our MC delta T, okay? So MC T1, oh, not T1 minus T2 minus T1, cool. And if you put in the numbers that we found earlier, you should end up with something around 337 kilojoules, okay? And we know that that would be the same as the, so the internal energy and the heat transfer. Cool, so that's all we need from state one to two. Now let's move us on to process two to three. So we know from the question that's an adiabatic process. So no heat transfer and the internal energy two, three should therefore equal the negative work between the two points there. All right, so I'm gonna calculate the work this way. So this is a, another equation that you can get. Apologies for using the wrong subscripts to V2. So this is an equation you can derive from the, um, the integral, which I believe was in one of the earlier <laughs> workshops. And if you substitute all those values in, you should get around about 274 kilojoules. Have I lost anyone? Hmm, cool. And the internal energy, therefore, is negative of the work. So we should get negative 274 kilojoules. All right, final process, and then we're pretty much done with the question. So for process three to one, um, we can no longer cancel out any terms for our first law, unfortunately, so we're gonna have to do every single term. So just to put the first law there again, uh, three, one, equals Q31 minus work 31. All right, so internal energy is pretty straightforward. We should all know this by now. MCV T1 minus T3, because we're going from three to one, okay? And if you calculate that right, you should get around about 60, negative 63 kilojoules. All right, so I've just been rounding these terms at the moment. You should probably keep it to more decimal places. Um, then we can also find our work, which is using 
the, uh, the work equation that we looked at before. So P1V1 minus P3V3 on 1 minus N. So this is no longer an adiabatic ice, isentropic um, process. So the N value is not necessarily going to be 1.4. And if you remember from part B, we calculated that earlier. So it's 0 0.7. So I'll just write that there. N is equal to 0 0.7, which is what we calculated earlier. And if everything goes well, you should get a value of around about 274 kilojoules. Okay. Now, how do we... F oh, sorry, not negative 274. Negative 84 kilojoules. Okay, so now you might be thinking, how do we find the heat transfer? Well, we just go to our first law equation, and we find that Q31 is equal to U31 plus work. Now, if you just add the two together, you should get negative 147 kilojoules. So that's these two added together here. And that gives you all the values for every process with the heat transfer as well as the work and internal energy. So to find the final work, you'll be able to add all of the results that we just got and you should be getting a value of around about 190 kilojoules. So 189.75 depending on how many decimal places you've been rounding to, and you'll notice that the work and the, the heat are going to be equal to each other. So the change in internal energy is essentially zero for the cycle if you're going between the exact same state points. And that's it.